Something's been off with Mortal Kombat for quite some time. The development hell stories of how Netherrealm had to pivot back onto this game from initially working on Injustice 3, the attempt at a total reboot that once we played the story became the same multiverse framework Mortal Kombat 11 was already leaning into. The lackluster sales compared to MK11, the overpriced and underwhelming skins, removed features like the iconic fighter towers and the crypt, or even wider gear customization, and a DLC that costs $50 slash £50 giving you three awesome new characters, but the worst story expansion in Mortal Kombat history. All of this led to premium DLC Chaos Reigns massively underselling. Chances are you didn't even realize it came out in September 2024, with how lukewarm everything now feels around Mortal Kombat. And word from trusted leaker Fate Unknown is that Mortal Kombat's future DLC plans are now cancelled altogether. This comes after Ed Boon said Mortal Kombat 1 would be their most supported game yet, as clearly the wider landscape in gaming favours, at least from the publisher side, live services and constant playtime across years. But there's only so much that a fan base will take when they're being so mistreated. The crux of why it's all fallen apart is pure publisher greed from the Warner Brothers side. The same feeling felt like it was encroaching in MK11 with the challenge towers encouraging microtransaction spending to get through them, but that was called out and addressed as soon as possible after launch. Netherrealm even came out and said, look, that was not the, the association that we were going with. We'll fix it. We'll tweak it. We hear you. We're not just in this game to get as much money from you as possible. Here though, WB are leeching as much money from fans as they can, for reasons I'll get to in a moment, but MK1's monetization and aggressively insulting price tags have left their mark. Where Mortal Kombat 11 would sell you three skins for around £5 or $6, MK1 wants $10 per skin. There was the sour taste of already having to pay or grind out currency for Shang Tsung at launch last year, and the overall amount of grinding required overall to access anything customizable is another negative. Customization here is honestly such a ridiculous letdown, and I need to break this down in a few different ways because I can't believe they dropped the ball so much after MK11 did it so well. Well, because even if you do get stuck into the framework on offer, the majority of skins and customization look terrible. Where MK11 let you swap out three pieces of individual gear and a costume, MK1 lets you change one item, usually a mask or something supremely minor, something you'd barely even notice. And the costume, well, it's called a palette, because often you're just unlocking or changing colors, applying a flame effect or whatever, at least on the material, rather than anything more meaningful. Now, yes, Mortal Kombat 11 did have palette swaps, but the majority of what you were getting, especially if you were putting the time into the challenge towers, that would get you a more bespoke looking outfit, something with, you know, different shoulder pads, a different overall mesh, a different overall shape. You weren't just spending so much time only to get a green version of something that was formerly red. So many of the seasonal rewards for MK1 have been lackluster and boring as hell as well. Like some, we I remember at the beginning, there was this whole overarching flame bundle that it was one of the many reasons that I gave up, and I think a lot of people did as well, where you were spending either real money or grinding out the premium currency to just get a more red and yellow looking version of Liu Kang or whatever. And it's like, how is this from the same team of creatives that gave us so many in-depth, you know, complex designs in MK11? Overall, Mortal Kombat 1 is just a massive letdown to this day. From its story being all over the place, wanting to be a reboot for the first half and then picking back up where MK11's deal DLC left off, albeit without Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa, to the boring, unfinished feeling invasion mode that was just off-putting, running around triggering the same fights over and over with very little reward. This mode is one of the weirdest feeling things in Mortal Kombat history, and we are talking about a property that would give us chess-based side modes or kart racing, things that have their place and are very much cult classics and beloved, especially in retrospect, but the invasions mode felt like a weird Super Smash Bros. Ultimate adjacent board game thing where you're just running around these environments triggering fights by stepping on different parts of the ground and just getting through them and moving on it didn't feel like you're really interacting with the space it didn't feel like it was an enjoyable place to go it was a very simple way to represent this kind of content and i felt like so much more could have been done rumors from the same person fate unknown mentioned the idea of getting rid of the invasions mode and replacing it with the towers of time the thing that was in uh, mk11 as a way to maybe spruce up the a 
approach to accessing different fighters, different modifiers for fights, and encouraging you to still, you know, keep playing. But we're over a year since launch. If they're going to do something that big, you can argue that the time has already passed, unless there's some sort of meaningful marketing push to remind everybody, you know, the positives of Mortal Kombat 1. I haven't played the game in months, and it's one of those things where even though I'm a massive Mortal Kombat diehard, I'm kind of just ready to move on. I'm kind of just ready for MK13 or whatever the hell they want to call the next installment. But with future plans being cancelled and with so much, you know, tumult happening across the board in regards to Warner Brothers, it's a, it's a, a rocky look ahead. We also have, you know, I mean, that's the thing. Last year, like I said, I'm a massive Mortal Kombat fan. I was lucky enough to interview Ed Boon. We had a really lovely conversation, albeit for only 10 minutes, but it was a nice time. And we were lucky enough to give away, uh, you know, the collector's edition for Mortal Kombat 1, which it was a great launch period. I just feel like when people started playing the game, Mortal Kombat 1's sustainability then fell off a cliff. I feel like most people gave up after a month or two at the most. Sales have been a shadow of Mortal Kombat 11, arguably just due to launch window hype and what comes after it, and over half the game is still being on Xbox One or PlayStation 4, where Mortal Kombat 1 is just not available. It's a next-gen only game. However, now, like I said, we're over a year since launch, and those sales numbers haven't increased, with word of mouth only turning to tell potential players to stay away instead. In a wider sense, Mortal Kombat is becoming too important for Warner Brothers, and this is the one of the most important talking points. It's too obviously in the crosshairs for investors, and specifically CEO David Zaslav, who said when it comes to Warner Brothers gaming output overall, going forward, they only want to focus on four key pillar brands. Batman slash DC, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, and Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat until now was the only one of those franchises that I would say had outright love baked in. It was yet to be fully exploited by this idea of the corporate machine, this idea of betraying fan respect and fan love. Like, obviously, we can talk about the likes of Game of Thrones, the way those TV seasons went, the fact that that was down to D&D, like the two showrunners. It didn't seem like it was an overarching Warner Brothers decision to take that thing in the direction that they did. But if we talk about the general feel around an IP, Mortal Kombat, especially going into Mortal Kombat 1, was sky high. And, you know, you can look at the likes of Gotham Knights or the handling of the Arkham franchise, the way that Batman and DC has rolled out, the DCEU, and the way those movies have come together. A lot of the shine was taken off Batman slash DC. Harry Potter had a massive success with Hogwarts Legacy, but the other, we haven't had any other games until then. And obviously there's all the controversy around uh, J.K. Rowling and the way that the movies and the TV show uh, roll out, the whole sequel thing with the Fantastic Beasts saga. My overall point is that Mortal Kombat had the most to lose and the most money invested in its the amount of love that was there, which clearly WB zeroed in on when it comes to Mortal Kombat 1's microtransactions. And I just think that's a bit of a, it's a bit of a shame. Mortal Kombat until now was the only one of these franchises that had outright love baked in. Yes, Mortal Kombat 10 was a bit of a shakier release than the flawless victory of Mortal Kombat 9, but Mortal Kombat 11 sold over 15 million units, had outstanding art direction, a phenomenal set of revitalized fighting mechanics, and a series of modes that respected the player's time. That is another thing that is so crucial to this overall conversation, is respecting the fan base, respecting the people that got you there in the first place. You know, and it's not like this is the first time that Mortal Kombat has bottomed out. You know, we had a, a weird period for MK across the end of the 2000s where, for as much as something like Deception's campaign mode is beloved, MK Armageddon felt like they were really running out of steam, just making the biggest roster possible, reselling you the same game engine, attempting a create your own fatality, uh, you know, series of finishes that was incredibly underwhelming. Uh, and that led to Midway overall, various other factors included, but that led to Midway going under entirely. It was Warner Brothers who saved Midway, saved NetherRealm, saved saved Ed Boon and revitalized Mortal Kombat with 2011's release. Mortal Kombat 9 in 2011 being the best received Mortal Kombat since something like Deadly Alliance. Um, and even then, Deadly Alliance has its issues. I feel like 2011's Mortal Kombat was the revitalized fire around the IP that they were then able to ride out for the rest of the 2010s, which, you know, like I said, MK10 was a little bit shaky, but MK11 was a reminder that, nah, this team knows exactly what they're doing. Look at this art direction. Look, You can almost pin it down to look at Scorpion. Look how incredible incredible Scorpion looks in MK11, for example, because the way that that stuff all came together across the 2010s is what made Mortal Kombat so revitalized overall. Mortal Kombat 1, though, feels every bit like the product of a development affected by top-down corporate cash grabs, money men making decisions for an IP formally guided and guarded by a veteran at the top in Ed Boon, who sadly can only do so much against shareholder demand, and a CEO more than happy to minimize integrity and respect to make the numbers go up. I feel like Mortal Kombat is the latest in a long 
long line of IP being held up in this endless attempt to extract as much money as possible from as many brands as possible. And like I said, it's not like MK has this flawless history whatsoever. It clearly doesn't. There have been many positives and negatives across the last 25 plus years. But at the same time, it does take something as aggressive as a, a premium DLC set around a character no one was asking to be fleshed out for this weird soft reboot that didn't go anywhere for aggressive skin pricing models to invade so much that, you know, it takes a veteran series of fans to go, nah, that's actually my breaking point and I'm done. And there's also the fact that we have all the guest character conversations as well. The fact that Mortal Kombat seems way more obsessed with reminding you of who they've managed to get in, whether it's Rambo or Ghostface or whoever, than it is fleshing out its own story, believing in its own characters. Because Mortal Kombat has one of the most distinct art designs in gaming history, the likes of Scorpion, Quan Chi, whoever you want to throw in there, they are incredibly recognizable and incredibly beloved because of how much confidence was always in that original style. Something that I would say clashes with the way Mortal Kombat Combat 1 presents itself, where all of a sudden you're into multiversal, MCU, Disney-style overarching approaches to storytelling that, yes, again, Mortal Kombat has done bits and pieces of in the past, but never so overtly super heroic, never so overtly chasing that sort of MCU dollar in a way, or at least that's how it felt. And that's also, you know, referring to a story mode that ends incredibly abruptly, eh, assumedly to then sell you this follow-on premium story DLC that a lot of people just bounce off because of how threadbare it was. To me, Netherrealm missed the opportunity to bring back the Dragon King Onaga, who a lot of fans were asking for. I still feel like you could do a Mortal Kombat centered around Onaga, but that whole conversation around guest characters, how much they cost, whether the monetization side of things is linked to trying to bring in increasingly bigger gets in regards to wider franchises, that's a whole thing that they need to figure out. I feel like overall the conversation is on what is the lifeblood of Mortal Kombat? Is it the guest characters? Is it the new age stuff? Is it just the gore? Are there ways to make those things work? Is it the mini games? Is it the spin offs? You know, we have mini games, like I said before, like chess and kart racing and spin offs like Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. When I was lucky enough to speak to Ed Boon, I asked him about the uh, Shaolin Monks sequel or a Shaolin Monks revival, and he was up for it. He said that the idea of a new Shaolin Monks should be done bigger than ever. They should do a proper co-op game, something you can play online, something like that, because they didn't just want to bring back the original title and, you know, sort of sell it that way. They wanted to do more with, with that original framework, which is the same thing that was confirmed to be happening back in 2019 with the re-releases of the original trilogy, uh, the original 90s games. There were screenshots leaked for that in terms of what the reskin of those games would have looked like, but the project was shut down, assumedly because of the need to push towards the next big game, the next main game, and uh, and get the likes of what would become Mortal Kombat 1 over the finish line. I feel like where we're at right now, Mortal Kombat is in an extremely precarious place. You're also talking about veterans like Ed Boon who have been doing this for decades of their own life life and it's very easy for someone in a, a forced unfortunate position to just step off the rung instead uh, and, and get out of this horrible corporate approach to franchises which is very much what we are in the middle of with the likes of David Zaslav having more sway than someone like an Ed Boon even though Ed Boon is the reason they have Mortal Kombat to play with in the first place.